Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you guys are well. In this video, I give you an update which is really hard for me to make because of all the products I have tested over the years. This is probably the product I wish the most that it all worked out as advertised. So I'm very sad to say goodbye to my dual 100 amp hour DCS lithium batteries under the bonnet. Honestly, I'm more than a bit gutted and I have to say that there were so many things I absolutely loved of that lithium under bonnet application. For example, the super fast charging, the high charge and discharge current. I like the weight savings I had with having the two lithiums under the bonnet. I like the space savings I had in the back of the cruiser. So really that is a setup I absolutely loved and would have very very much liked continue running. I also proved quite a few doubters wrong who at the beginning said you can't really start off a lithium or you can't winch off the lithium. However, as I said in all the video reviews of the DCS, there was always one elephant in the room and that was the longevity of the batteries. Because if you look at all the literature, Life PO4 or lithium in general is not really well suited for high heat applications. But before we continue on, I would like to ask you for a favor. I think it is quite important that this new update information gets out. So please help me by sharing, liking, subscribing and leaving me a comment in the comment section below because that will push the video higher up in the YouTube search results and more people will get to see it. So let's get back to the video. But again, the big question mark was always over longevity. As I said in my last DCS update video, a capacity test was well overdue and that's what I did two months ago together with Joe from JS Auto Electrics. To say the least, the results were shocking. But before we get into the fine details, let me give you first a quick recap how we got to this in case you haven't seen my previous videos. Joe from JS Auto Electrics installed the initial set of DCS 100 amp hour marine batteries in November 2019. These batteries used passive balance technology, but DCS deemed them suitable for underbonnet use. During various trips they performed without any significant issues, although their Bluetooth functionality and accompanying app displayed consistent bugs that remained unsolved. After approximately a year a capacity test was conducted, revealing a substantial decline in performance. One battery experienced a capacity loss of about 30%, while the other faced a 22% reduction, significantly exceeding the expected annual loss of 5% as claimed by DCS. According to the manufacturer, this was due to the outdated passive balance technology. I considered at the time going back to lead acid under the bonnet, but DCS assured me that I would not have similar losses with the new active balance batteries. We initially tried to install the at the time new dual 130 amp hour battery system, but due to the solar regulator and extended height, it did not fit in the cruiser. In February 21, therefore Joe from JS Auto Electrics installed the latest version of the 100 amp hour marine batteries. Due to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, travel opportunities were limited, but a noteworthy winter trip was undertaken. Unfortunately, a BMS firmware recall affected these batteries. Due to the pandemic related delays and upcoming travel plans, DCS eventually dispatched two replacement marine batteries with updated firmware and the latest technology in November 21. These batteries got a proper workout with quite a few trips, but over the last one or two trips it felt to me that the battery capacity diminished. So before I now went to Germany for a month, I uh, liaised again with Joe from JS Auto Electrics. So after Joe did a proper capacity test in his workshop, we were both shocked that uh, the capacity of one of my batteries was at only 50% and the other was at less than 80%. 
especially with the 50% one, I'm not sure when that would have failed, but I can't imagine it would be too far away. And obviously, if you watch my channel, I do a lot of remote touring, a battery failure there, you know, several days from the next road and uh, sometimes a week from any civilization would not be very good. I also should mention that Joe from Jazz Auto Electrics purchased a 75 amp hour DCS marine battery for under the bonnet of his Prado. His Prado is a daily runaround and touring vehicle. It doesn't get crazy use. And this under bonnet DCS is not charged by the alternator. It's charged by a DC DC charger and it only has very low current draw um, of a fridge. When we saw that my batteries degraded so much, uh, Joe pulled the battery out of his Prado, which was two years under the bonnet there, and also did a capacity test of that single battery. Unfortunately, the capacity in that battery had also dropped by 30% in less than two years. So again, not very good especially as they were not charged by the alternator and also had no high current draw. I should also mention that JS Auto Electrics completely stopped using DCS batteries in any of their installations a few months ago, but that are unrelated reasons which uh, I totally understand Joe's point. However, they did not affect me with my batteries. So I won't mention that here, but maybe at some stage we make a separate video and I'll let Joe explain what his reasons were. So where from here? Obviously, after the findings of my batteries, I contacted DCS. I let them know of the findings. Put it like this, the response and feedback was less than satisfactory. There were some suggestions that moisture intake in my batteries would have caused it. In that regards, I have to say we did open the battery which had 50% capacity loss and there was absolutely zero moisture ingress visible. I was then told by DCS that given I had done around 30,000 kilometers in the 16 months, I put the batteries through six times more punishment. This was the first time I heard that the DCS battery's lifespan is kilometer related, so they don't seem really suitable for people who actually drive and tour in their vehicles. Go figure. Both batteries were sent back to DCS. I haven't heard anything since. It's a few weeks ago now. This whole scenario really left me in the lurch because I have a big trip uh, coming up in four weeks and all of a sudden I'm without any batteries. DCS did not have any replacement batteries which at least could have tied me over that next trip. I now really have to scramble and thanks to Joe's help I will now convert everything back to lead acid under the bonnet and then put a different lithium battery in the back of the Land Cruiser. At least that is a proven setup and should last me for a very long time. But the new setup will be obviously the subject of a new video so stay tuned for that. Overall I'm not very happy how this all was handled by DCS but uh, it is what it is. For me, I have no issue to continue run my 150 amp hour DCS battery in the camper trailer. I probably do a capacity test there as well at some stage. I still have the two 130 amp hour batteries in the back of my uh, Hilux. There will be alternator charge, there will be use for winching, and I definitely will keep you updated how the capacity loss goes there without the engine heat. However, I do find that DCS does not always really test their releases well and they're often a bit quick in my books. Obviously, it is concerning that they're advertised for under bonnet use. To be fair, they only have a three years warranty. However, from my and Joe's experience, if you really do a capacity test, I think after three years, if they are still running, you will have lost a massive amount of capacity, which does not make it a worthwhile investment in my book. That is really a pity because I did love everything else about lithium under the bonnet. However, you never know until you try. So I was willing to give it a go. And as always, I report honestly back to you what my findings are. And at this stage, 
lithium is not suited for high heat under bonnet applications. So if you have a set of DCS batteries under the bonnet, I would strongly suggest you do a proper capacity test. Please note, looking at the state of charge on the app does not work. That will not show you what is truly going on. So get the batteries pulled out, either get someone professionally to do a capacity test, or you can also purchase capacity tests as we found quite accurate on eBay or similar marketplaces. Again, this is only mine and Joe's experience. Um, let me know in the comment section if you have different experiences. However, you will need to do a proper capacity test because otherwise just saying they're working fine um, is not really a valid uh, comment because mine also worked fine. So what is my final conclusion? I think I've shown over the past three years that you can run lithium under the monnet, you can winch off it, uh, you can run it over prolonged corrugation. So all of that stuff does work. However, at a very, very high cost in regards to the diminished capacity. I did not find out when the battery actually fails and I won't be doing that because I just can't afford that on my travel. Someone else can do that. However, with the last set, I don't think uh, these set of batteries would even have made the three years. So if you have the money, if you don't mind changing your batteries every three years, um, I think go for it. But for me personally, uh, that experiment unfortunately failed and I will be returning back to a lead acid uh, solution for under bonnet and then put a good uh, lithium battery in the rear of the cruiser. And that way I really should be able to run that for 10 years, at least a lithium part. And if I have to replace my lead acid battery every three to four years, that cost me $300, $350 for a quality battery. That is fine with me. That is only my personal opinion. Don't forget to leave me in the comment section what you reckon. So if you got some useful information out of that video or maybe it even saved you some bucks, I would greatly appreciate if you could share, like and subscribe because any indicators like that will push the video forward according to the YouTube algorithms. This is a privately funded channel. I don't do any paid reviews. So if you like to help me creating this content, please head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me staying independent and creating this honest and unbiased content for you. Thank you very much. I hope to see you along the tracks.